，匪夷所思，近乎歇斯底里，是百分之百的滥用武力，是明显的违反了国际惯例，尤其是违反了《芝加哥公约》《国际民航条约》的基本的精神。我们当然不能接受美国这种做法，不是证明。As we move into 2023, China's position on the global stage remains a topic of significant interest and speculation. With a growing economy and expanding military capabilities, China's influence is felt across the world, and its strategic relationship with Russia is a major factor in global geopolitics. In this video, we will take a closer look at China's evolving economic landscape in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. As China continues to reopen its economy, we will explore the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, as well as the critical role of China's relationship with Russia in shaping its economic future and geopolitical strategy. Before the video, just want to say quickly that the GF News is a channel that covers major geopolitical, economic, and financial news and trends. Make sure to subscribe to stay informed and gain a deeper understanding of the complex issues that shape our world. Current international situation is clearly complex, but the Chinese relationship has passed the test of international competition, being mature, calm, and calm. Crisis and chaos, although they are frequently appear in our presence, but 危中有机，危可转机，深化政策互信，加强战略协作，拓展全方位的务实合作，那么为维护我们两国的正当。China's decision to abandon its zero-COVID policy and shift its focus to global affairs is a significant development, as it suggests that China is ready to take a more active role in international affairs. China's top diplomat Wang Yi visited several European countries before traveling to Russia, including Germany, where he attended the Munich Security Conference and exchanged with Antony Blinken, U.S.'s Secretary of State. Who warned that China was considering providing little aid to Russia? The tension between the two countries recently reached new highs as the U.S. shot down a Chinese balloon on its airspace before canceling a diplomatic meeting that was planned between the two countries. Nevertheless, China seems to be positioning itself as a peacemaker, taking a role that the U.S. had traditionally played. This move is not surprising. Given China's growing global influence and its desire to be seen as a responsible global power, the meeting between Wang Yi and Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba is particularly significant, given the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. In a newly released position paper, China's Foreign Ministry called for a resumption of peace talks, an end to unilateral sanctions, and stressed its opposition to the use of nuclear weapons, a stance Chinese leader Xi Jinping communicated to Western leaders last year. For its strategic alliance with Russia to be profitable, China needs Russia to remain capable of sustaining itself economically. And as the wind shifts and Russia suffers many losses, both militarily due to the increasing support of America to Ukraine and economically due to the occidental sanctions imposed on the Kremlin, now seems to be the perfect time to call for a ceasefire. For the past 12 months. China has refused to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Sixteen Chinese entities have been sanctioned by the U.S. Treasury Department for helping the Russian Wagner mercenaries on the battlefield. Western nations impose strict sanctions on Russia, banning imports of oil and exports of high-tech projects. As Russia's trade with Western countries plunged in 2022, China became, by far and away, its most important trading partner. This increasing presence on the world stage comes as China finally reopens its country to foreigners, putting an end to a very aggressive zero-COVID policy that lasted three years. As citizens were fed up with the never-ending lockdowns, especially as other countries seem to have moved on from COVID and are finally easing the sanitary restrictions, this rapid shift may be a good sign for the Chinese economy. But it caused great damage to the old and mostly unvaccinated part of the population, as hospitals were not ready to handle the massive number of newly infected people. Officially, deaths since the start of the pandemic stand at just 87,468. Or 0.006% of the population. 
that the official toll is an undercount is not in question. Doctors report being pressed to leave COVID off death certificates and people who die at home are not included in the tally. Reports of overwhelmed hospitals and crematoriums suggest a far higher death toll too. To make it worse, China's population is facing rapid aging and is showing clear signs of decline. According to the data released by the Chinese government, China's population contracted by 850,000 people in 2022 with 9. 66 million births against 10.41 million deaths. It was the first time in more than half a century that deaths outnumbered births in China. The initial thought might be to blame it on the pandemic, but that will be a blinkered assumption without stressing upon the stunted birth rate. In fact, given the questionable nature of data reported from China, it's plausible that China's population already declined in 2021. This was the sixth consecutive year that the number of births fell, down from 10.6 million in 2021, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Many demographers and statisticians warned for years about a population decline on the cards. These warnings were perhaps perhaps the reason why the Chinese Communist Party government reposed its one-child policy in 2016 and extended the limit to three children in 2021. Local governments offered tax rebates and outright cash handouts to couples having children. The source of anxiety was partly social and partly economy. We sometimes forget that China is still a developing economy. Despite its phenomenal evolution from rampant poverty, its average population still earns less than the average earnings in advanced economies, and the shrinking population could constrict China, like other leading developing economies, into a middle income trap. The middle income trap captures a situation where a middle income country can no longer compete internationally in standardized labor-intensive goods because wages are relatively too high, but it also cannot compete in higher value added activities on a broad enough scale because productivity is relatively too low. To add to the trouble, the Chinese housing market is in the midst of a crisis. This crisis has been fueled by a range of factors including rising debt levels and overbuilding. One particularly concerning practice has been the sale of unfinished buildings by real estate companies. In this practice, developers sell properties before they are fully constructed, using the proceeds to finance new construction projects. This has led to a situation where developers have used the money from unfinished buildings to start new projects, which may also remain unsold. This practice has contributed to a glut of inventory and downward pressure on prices as many of these properties remain unsold or unoccupied. In some cases, buyers have been left with unfinished properties or have had to wait years for construction to be completed. This has created significant challenges for both buyers and developers as they struggle to navigate a complex and rapidly changing market. The sale of unfinished buildings has been particularly prevalent in some of China's largest cities where developers have been eager to cash in on rising home prices. In recent years, Home prices in cities such as Beijing and Shanghai have risen rapidly, outpassing the growth of incomes and creating concerns about a housing bubble. To address these challenges, the Chinese government has implemented a range of policies aimed at cooling the housing market. These include restrictions on home purchases, tighter lending standards, and increased oversight of developers. However, the effectiveness of these policies remain to be seen, and the real estate crisis in China remains a significant concern for the country's economy. Finally, it is clear that the tensions between China and the United States over various geopolitical and economic issues will continue to shape China's trajectory in 2023 and beyond. In particular, the ongoing tensions over Taiwan and the economic war being fought with the US are likely to have significant implications for China. One key area where these tensions are likely to be felt is in the technology sector. The export bans on microchips to China, which are a critical component in building advanced technologies, have already had a significant impact on Chinese companies. For example, Huawei, one of China's leading tech companies, has struggled to maintain its position as a global leader in 5G technology due to these restrictions. Moreover, the US and other countries are increasingly scrutinizing China's tech companies, such as TikTok and Huawei, over concerns about data privacy and security. This could lead to further restrictions on Chinese companies operating overseas, which will limit China's ability to expand its influence and advance its technological capabilities. In addition to technology, the tensions between China and the US are likely to affect other areas of the Chinese economy. For instance, the ongoing trade war between the two countries has resulted in higher tariffs and increased costs for many Chinese companies. This has already had a negative impact on China's 
export dependent economy and it is likely to continue to do so in 2023. It will be interesting to see how China responds to these challenges and what strategies it will employ to continue its growth and development in the face of adversity.